15 years in the making. This is a story about my pigeon pain. And let me clarify, it wasn't 15 years of consistent work. More like 15 years of inconsistent work. Constant revisions, constant repainting. I even had to sand it here and there. It was quite a battle. Hello and welcome. My name is Charlene Bos. I go by Bob. I am not your typical painter. And today I'm going to tell a story. A story about my pigeon painting. It started once I graduated from the Maryland Institute College of Art. And that was in the year 2005. I wanted to, in a way, repay my father. He actually supported me financially. In return, I wanted to give him a masterpiece. And he always had a fascination of pigeons. He was a food vendor who fed the pigeons leftover bread or leftover pretzels that were not sellable. And he would tell me of stories of a place in Greece, the Sintakama Square area in Athens, where the pigeons were not afraid of humans. They would actually climb on top of you. And I actually went there as a child with him. And yes, he was absolutely correct. They would get on top of you if you fed them. Anyway, in 2004, I was in Greece and took photos of lots of areas. I was on the islands. It was a class trip. And one of the places I visited was Sintagma Square. I had the thought of actually making a painting of it. So I took some photos of the place. But something struck me and I kind of wanted to do something where it was a pigeon's view. So one of the shots I literally laid on the ground to take the photo. But the photo was not enough. I wanted to distort the perspective and create contrast with a bluer sky and an orange tone building. I exaggerated a lot and honestly it was a sloppy execution with not a solid plan and one of the things that was throwing me off in the beginning was my perspective versus the photo's perspective and they just were fighting and not getting along where I would copy more of the photo's perspective and I'd go along with my perspective and I would stare at the painting and say why does this look off? Well, uh, I never planned it correctly. I lost my focus in painting. Once I graduated, part had to do with me breaking my finger. And it was kind of hard to paint with one hand. I do use my left hand for the brushing scene, so having to use only one hand was a setback. But that was also my problem. I shouldn't have given up. I should have been consistent, and I learned my lesson in some ways. My skill set and discipline were behind my ambitions, and I could not live up to the actual vision I wanted. So I set that painting to the side for 10 years. Sadly, my father thought the painting was actually finished, and he actually even hanged it in our living room. <laughs> I knew the truth. And when did I start working on it again? In California, in around 2015, I believe. I'm not 100% certain on the date, but at one point I left Philly and went to California. And I've been here since. While in California, I also struggled. I would attempt to do work, but I would never finish it. I lost track of how many drawings and paintings I started, but I never finished. And the pigeon one was one of them. But I had like a, I want to say a drastic change of events in my life that made me go back into art. So in some ways, for about 10 years, I did absolutely nothing. In some ways, I want to call it my lost decade. When I started again, I started slowly, I was very rusty. I was able actually to finally finish a painting 
once again and I want to say in the year 2014 I'm not 100% certain but uh, when I visited my father and brother I brought the pigeon painting with me and said to myself maybe I could actually finish it this time boy <laughs> was I wrong in some ways I had lots of years to look at the painting and see what needs to be done and I thought of what I needed to do and I started to redo it one thing I started doing is correcting the perspective my um, actual perspective I was trying to achieve and the photos perspective were colliding and slowly but surely I started doing my perspective and not the photos perspective and I started using the photo more for information in some ways. Some of the major changes I started off with are pretty much the windows. I didn't like where they were and that was the thing that gave away perspective in a bad way. And then I had to redo the bricks. The bricks were something. That's what probably made me give up at one point. I was going through the painting, I was saying to myself, this is a lot of work. I have a lot of work to do. There was the columns, there was the windows, there were the pigeons themselves. I had nine pigeons at one point. In the photo, there's ten pigeons. In the painting, I did nine. There was a sliver of a pigeon I just didn't want to include. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of birds to paint. And I gave up, pretty much. Why did I give up? I really don't know. But it was a lot of work that I wanted to do to put it in. And I was starting to question, was it really worth it? Should I just start a new painting? Should I just kick it to the side? But instead of kicking it to the side, I just held on to it. And what did I do? I honed it in my home. And that's where I stared at it on and off. I kept saying to myself, wow, this painting needs a lot of work. I started thinking what needs to be done to finish it. And I came up with a game plan eventually. So after studying the painting and what I needed to do to finish it, I felt very intimidated. So I put it to the side again for five more years. To begin, I had to make some difficult decisions. I was not satisfied with a lot of the stuff and the bricks that I prematurely started to detail were one of them perspective was off and also the position of the soldier that's engraved into the rocks was also off and then I was saying to myself why do I not have that soldier hut there so those are like two big changes and not just that the columns and then I said to myself hold on a second why am I just faking the bricks when I actually could paint the actual bricks. Yes, I became insanely obsessed. There was a lot of details I was trying to capture, and in order to complete this painting, I thought about things such as the bricks, the spikes, the columns, the details about the columns, everything, the imperfections. There was like watermarks or Repairs that were made, even the marble. I wanted to get the marble correct. There was like certain striations in the marble that were distinctive. I said to myself, what if someone who really knew this building can actually look at the painting and say, wow, he captured a lot of it. But one big difference, the colors, yes. From the start, I did want to change the colors a bit. I wanted to emphasize a very blue, a very orange tone, which is nothing like the photo. That's one of the things that led to my struggle. I felt like if I did the nice contrast between orange and blue, it would grab attention. And since I wanted the perspective to be my perspective and not the photos, I had to do the bricks in the perspective I wanted. And that took a long time actually. I knew I wasn't going to nail every brick, but 
getting the perspective right is everything. And it will make the painting uh, stand out and look more believable. Why did I go with trying to get bricks detailed? I want people's attention span on my painting to be longer than five seconds. And going back to the windows, that is another story. Some have blinds up, some have blinds down. And I tried to capture the variations in the end. As for the pigeons, cut back to four pigeons. Yes. Nine to four. Why? Well, I wanted them to look bigger, especially the one closest to the viewing plane. And I wanted him to stand out. Going back to trying to capture the bricks, there was also text. There was some text on some bricks. And I mean, had to work on that. I don't know what the text says. I could probably read it, but I can't understand. Maybe someone else who knows Greek better than me can, but I tried copying some of it. Besides that, I also corrected the soldier. I made him originally in the painting too wide and too shallow. I made him just about right, I feel. And then there were the plants. <laughs> If there's any area where I feel I lacked the skill set a long time ago, it was probably the plants. I really did not know what I was doing and I felt miserably in the beginning. But years later, improved skill set, improved motivation to paint, I feel like I was capable again. Did I capture the grass 100%? No. I used it more as a reference. In the end, I got to a certain point where I needed to finish this painting and bring it to my father in Greece. So, grass for grass, plant for plant, no. Photo as a reference, yes. If you look at the photo and the actual painting, you'll see there's some sections I copied and then some I improvised. Well, really, I improvised most of it, but my most clever one, I believe, is my signature. I don't like making my signature very obvious in my painting. I always try to disguise it somewhere in my paintings. And in this scenario, I did my standard X, where I draw a line like this, and then two crosses like that, make two X's for my name in Greek, and then the two and the zero. And one of the last things I finished in the painting was the foreground concrete. That was accumulation of several years of actual work. In some ways, I just used a palette knife to try to get the texture of it. And also to go against the photo, I, I spruced up the contrast and added a few more pebbles of rocks in the foreground and gave it a little more contrast. I didn't like how in the photo it looked too white. It didn't stand out that well. And to wrap up this video, Yes, this painting was 15 years in the making. If I would have done this painting again, this time I would have had a better plan. I'm satisfied in the end though. I just hope my father will be satisfied. I really don't believe he has seen this painting. I told him I finished it. He's just gonna have to wait until I actually hand it to him to see it in the end. Anyhow, if you made it to the end of this story, of this painting, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Once again, my name is Charles I go by Bob. I'm not your typical painter. Also, check out my Instagram if you want to see a still image of this painting. Thanks again.